Every time I think of the Fatui, the first thing that comes to my mind is Tartaglia. He's one of the first harbingers you meet in the game that's still alive, <coughs> and the first to become a playable character. He's quite friendly, but don't let his charm fool you. Tartaglia will find the opportunity to fight you. No, really, he will. What really shows is his passion for combat. By demonstration, his skills. His hydro-infused blades, insanely fast hydro application, two different burst abilities, and his top-tier archery skill. Today, we're going to discuss if you should pull for Mr. Worldwide, aka Tartaglia or not. Alright, let's do this. Yo, what is going on, guys? And welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. And today, well, as you can see, we have something a little different here today. I kind of wanted to try out some new camera angle. <laughs> and he already fidgeted. Today, we're going to be investigating this sussy man that just so happens to be everywhere. Now, before we get started with the video, make sure you guys hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel for more of this type of content. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you guys don't miss out my latest uploads or whatever I go live on my streams. Now, let's jump right into the video. Alright, so here is Tartaglia's overall view for his build. So, as you can see, he has almost like 1900 attack. I wish it had been a bit higher, to be honest. Uh, a little bit of elemental mastery. His crit ratio is 89, 162. I wish I had a bit more crit damage as well. Energy recharge. As you can probably see, like these are all just like standard offensive stats that you will want for a standard DPS. So you can probably already guess what you're going to be wanting to build Tartaglia. All right, so let's go and move on to his talent, starting off with his normal attacks, which only reason to be using this is for the charge attack. Again, you think those attacks are going to do some damage? <laughs> His charge attack is going to be used when your skill has downtime or to apply riptide. We'll of course be going more into detail later in this video. Here are his damage multipliers. On again, like mainly the only really thing you're going to be caring about is just the riptide, which, you know, actually it can dish out some decent damage, but other than that, it's not really the majority part of his damage. Now onto his skill, this ability is where his complexity in combat begins. To put it simply, his skill converts his normal attacks to hydro-infused normal and charge attack damage. However, like his foul legacy, the longer you stay in this state, the longer he needs to rest his cooldown. So that means you will need to be strategic and find great timing with him on field while using his skill. The main goal is after you've finished using him and swap off the next time you swap back to him his skill should be nearly ready to use again for me personally i would say around 5 to 11 seconds at max this will give you 17 seconds long in cooldown which is nearly enough time to rotate to your other characters until back to tartaglia for his damage multipliers as you can see he has a normal attack stream of six hit and you know it's pretty decent charge attack is obviously gonna be where it hits the hardest as you can see at minimal you can have at least six seconds cooldown back for his skill but the longest is 36 seconds which is obviously ridiculous so do not go over this so you don't have to wait for 36 seconds to get his skill back it's pretty ridiculous and obviously max cooldown is 45 that's even beyond so obviously do not do that but mainly to cover his six hit attack combo string just going on to more of his attack combinations you will use both your normal and your charge attack as well that being said you will need to consider your stamina management i don't really have a specific attack combination because to me it's not as strict as someone like eula or i'll hate them mainly i usually go for is two normal attacks to charge attack then either dash or jump, or three normal attacks to charge attack, then dash or jump. You can always add in normal attack variations, especially when running low on stamina. Now you may be thinking, why do I need to know all this? I mentioned earlier that he has fast hydro application. That's because he applies what it's called Riptide, which is basically a mark on your enemies that will do AOE hydro damage after being affected by a melee attack. What's unique about him is that there is no limit to how much Riptide you can apply. In other words, the more enemies apply with Riptide, especially grouped up together, the more potential Hydro Damage and Application concurs. This is why he currently still has the fastest Hydro Application in the game. Phew, that was a lot. So TLDR, try to quick swap his skill to apply Hydro, then swap off so you can have it ready for your next rotation. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention, you can't plunge while being in the melee stance, I'm not sure why, that's just how it is. Alrighty, now on to his burst. Tartaglia is currently the only character that has two different types of burst stances. Basically, one being the range, while the other being the melee. Both have their own strengths and uses. To put it simply, his range stance will shoot an arrow, dealing AoE hydro damage, and applying Riptide while also refunding 20 energy back. This burst is more for utility, like applying Riptide and lowering energy recharge needs. And for the melee stance, he simply does a huge slash of AoE Hydro Damage, which triggers Riptide Blast. As you can probably guess by the name, all the Riptides currently applied will explode, dealing AoE Hydro Damage, which is also considered Elemental Burst Damage. So a lot of commonly asked questions about Tartaglia's Burst is, well, which one's better? Well again, they both have their own uses. Depending on the situation, of course one will perform better than the other. In my experience, most of the times you would want to use his range form in the Abyss just so you have enough energy to reuse it again, especially progressing to the next chambers. Until the last chamber, then you can use his melee stance for maximum damage. But of course, if you want to always see bigger numbers and keep using his melee stance, then yes, technically he will deal more damage, but that is my general recommendation. 
Now going on to his damage multipliers, as you can see, his damage multipliers are no joke. The lower one is his range. Well, that is the downside to it. It's going to be less damage than the melee, but range has the more utility side to it, whereas melee has a higher damage multiplier. When we go into the more talent sections, you're definitely going to be wanting to level the subs because these are quite high for his damage multipliers, and you can obviously enhance it even further with reactions. Also, the Riptide Blast damage is additional too, so that's quite nice. And like what I mentioned before with his ranged stance, you will get 20 energy back, which is very, very useful. Thus, energy cost is actually quite manageable. Alright, so now to his A1 passive called Never Ending, which basically is extends Riptide duration by a second. So it's an okay quality of life upgrade. It doesn't really enhance his strength in combat, but it does help with his Hydra application, which honestly it wasn't really a problem anyway. Now for his A4 passive, Sword of Torrents. When Tartaglia is in Foul Legacy, Raging Tides, Melee Stance, on dealing a crit hit, normal and charge attacks apply the Riptide status effect to opponents. This is great and, of course, a quality of life passive, so you don't have to rely on charge attacking or using his ranged burst. But, honestly, I'm not really sure why they just didn't make this built in his skill and instead just give him a new passive, something to do with like enhancing more Hydra damage or decrease Hydra resistance or something like that. Yeah, that's the thing I never really understood about his passives. But other than that, it enables easier access to Riptide application. For his utility passive, Mastery of Weaponry, it just basically increases your own party member's normal tax level by one. Honestly, I don't know why this passive is here unless you're using Lenny. <laughs> okay, I'm just being cope. Yeah, again, I'm not sure why they have this since most of Tartaglia's teammates doesn't really benefit from this, including himself. I guess it's nice. Man, that's a limit of 5 star. He might have the worst passives in the game. Alright, so those are the talents. Now for his talents priority, I would start off by leveling up his skill as much as you possibly can since this is where majority of his DPS come from. I would recommend level 7 and higher. Unless you're going to be mainly using him as a burst DPS, then I will level up his burst first. I will go for level 8 and higher. Both of these two though, you will definitely want to upgrade regardless of what build you are doing because majority of his DPS come from these two. Lastly, for his normal attacks, it doesn't really need to be leveled up unless you're going to use his charge attack a lot to apply Riptide, but most of the times you won't have time for that in combat. In my recommendation, level 4 to 7 might be enough. Alright, that's done. Let's go and move on to his constellations. So starting off with his C1 called Foul Legacy Tide with Holder, it decreases the cooldown of Foul Legacy Raging Tide by 20%. It is a nice quality of life constellation, but it is needed. Just to remind you, to get this constellation, you need to spend a 5 star pity, which obviously is not worth spending your gems on. C2, Foul Legacy under stream. When opponents affected by Riptide are defeated, Tartaglia regenerates 4 elemental energy. This may sound great at first, but most case scenario, Tartaglia will already generate tons of particles if in certain situations. He has tons of enemies marked with Riptide. And in single target, that is where Riptide does struggle a bit, hence making this constellation negligible. C3, Abyssal Mayhem, Vortex of Turmoil. It's basically 3 levels up to his skill. This actually is a DPS increase when in his melee stance, but this is at C3, which is not something I would recommend to spend your primos on, even if it's an early DPS gain so far. C4, Abyssal Mayhem, Hydro Spout. If Tartaglia is in Foul Legacy, Raging Tide's melee stance triggers Riptide Slash against opponents on the field affected by Riptide every 4 seconds, otherwise triggered Riptide Flash. Riptide Slashes and Riptide Flashes triggered by this constellation effect are not subject to the time intervals that would typically apply to these two Riptide effects, nor do they have any effect on those time intervals. So now you have an additional Riptide effect applied, with Range Stance having Riptide Flashes while Melee Stance with Riptide Slashes. This sounds like a DPS increase at first, but if you're using Tartaglia to enable Reaction, which in most teams you will, he will struggle to consistently enable Reactions, especially if you're trying to do a certain rotation that includes vaping his attacks. These Riptides will screw up and will take most of his vaped attacks. This actually is a DPS loss unless with a very specific combo or a Mono Hydro Team slash Freeze. In most cases, you rarely want to have this on your Tartaglia. C5, Havoc Formless Blade, which is 3 levels up to his burst. It's nice for his burst damage. And finally, his C6, Havoc Annihilation. When Havoc Obliteration is cast in melee stance, his burst, the cooldown of the Foul Legacy, his skill, is reset. This effect will only take place once Tartaglia returns to his ranged stance. So he basically gets his cooldown reset back when he only uses melee burst stance. Now that may seem OP at first, because that means you don't have to worry about cooldown management at all, right? But in my opinion, this constellation is quite overrated. Unless you want to keep using the Tartaglia on field, this is only a quality of life constellation that doesn't really increase his DPS. In fact, for most teams, you would already want to swap back to them to reuse their skills, then come back to Tartaglia. Only reason I could see this being used fully is for fun like exploration. Overall, his constellations are actually bad. Well, not necessarily bad, but just aren't needed. Tartaglia functions fine at C0, and none of these constellations here 
impact his damage or gameplay as much. Alright, so moving on to his artifact set, starting with the four-piece set, his overall best in slot is Gold Nymph's Dream, which is pretty much tailor-made for him. The two-piece effect gives Hydro Damage bonus, while the four-piece effect gives attack percent and extra Hydro Damage bonus by doing normal charge, plunging attack, elemental skill, and elemental burst will each grant you one stack independently, which for this condition is quite easy for him. At max stacks, you can gain about 25% attack and another 50% Hydro Damage bonus, plus a two-piece set effect with an overall 30% Hydro Damage bonus. This set is miles ahead of other sets, but however, it is locked in one of Sumeria's desert artifact domains, so lots of new players won't have access to it. Plus, the other set that's co-included in that domain is not great on other characters, which would make this domain overall not resin efficient. Luckily, there is an alternative, his old best in slot. It's the four-piece Heart of Depth, which is the one I'm currently using. Two-piece is Hydro Damage Bonus, and four-piece boosts normal and charge attack damage. Only downside really to this is it only boosts her attack normal and charge attack damage, when half of his damage also comes from his burst, but still a usable set for him. Other than that, he's kind of flexible for his two-piece sets. He mainly wants Hydro Damage Bonus, Attack Percent, Burst Damage, or normal and charge from the new set, although most of you guys won't have this, or you might as well just go for the four-piece Heart of Depth effect. Now moving on to his stats, for subsets you're going to want standard DPS stats which are crit, attack, and EM for vape mainly. Now for the main stats, starting with the sands, you're generally going to want attack percent. EM is a secondary option if used in mainly vape teams, and of course, better subsets. Then for the goblet is always hydro damage bonus, attack for an alternative although you will want hydro damage bonus eventually. And of course, the crit rate or crit damage circlet depending on what you need more of. Basically all standard DPS stats. Alright, so those were the artifacts, now let's go on and move on to his weapons. Like the usual DPS builds, I recommend for those weapons to have crit or attack. All weapons I mentioned in this video are the ones, in my opinion, that benefit Tartaglia the most. Starting with 3-star weapons, which there really isn't good ones for him specifically, since you would want a good amount of attack, and 3-star weapons have low base attack in general. Only one I can see is Slingshot for the crit rate substat, but you're going to want to upgrade to a better weapon eventually. Now onto 4 stars, starting with the free to play options, Prototype Crescent is strong, however its condition is quite restrictive and does require you to hit a weak spot with a charge attack which for most enemies, you can't do that, especially in Fontaine since most of them do not have their own weak spot. Still, if you have it, you can definitely use it on him. And from what I've heard is King Squire, which is Sumer's characterable weapon. I personally don't have this, but it's another viable option for him if he uses passive properly. For the battle pass, Verdescent Hunt is still a great option for him. Crit rate subset and passive also works perfectly for him. For Gotcha, I will go for the Stringless since it does buff skill and burst damage plus EM. A strong choice if you have it. If not, then Rust would be a next, although I really don't like this weapon much on him anymore because it only buffs his normal attack damage and even decreases his charge attack damage, which he does need for his overall DPS. Still can use if it's already leveled up. Now onto the 5 stars, starting off with limited weapons, obviously his best in slot, which is his signature weapon, Polar Star, crit rate subset, plus attack percent, elemental skill, and elemental burst damage buffed, works perfectly for his kit, other than that, honestly any other 5 star bow works as long as they have crit or attack, so for example, Skyward Harp is still a great option to use on him, gives crit rate subset as well as the crit damage on here, although the rest is kinda okay. But yeah, mainly crit and attack works pretty well on him, crit preferably being prioritized more than attack, but between the two of them are viable options. And that's everything about his weapon options, now let's move on on to his team comps. For Tartaglia teams, his job is to basically be the Hydro Enabler for the team. In other words, he should always be applying Hydro as the Ore element while your sub DPS characters trigger reactions. He has mainly three teams where he fulfill his role quite well. Starting off with, in my opinion, his strongest team, which is the Vape team. The main core of this team is having double Pyro and a support flex. Really, there are only two characters that fits perfectly for these roles. One of them which comes to no surprise is, of course, Bennett. He buffs attack and covers healing. I mean, it's Bennett, of course, he's great with Tartaglia. Then for the next Pyro option, I would recommend and Chung Ling. Chung Ling will actually be your DPS for this team. Reason being is you will want her technically to apply Hydro as much as possible to be the aura, so Chung Ling is able to vape every single hit from her burst. This will overall double her damage, which again, she does already a lot of damage, so this is already a massive DPS increase. And for the support flex, you can use any such as shield or buffers, preferably buffers to further increase this team's overall DPS. The best character for this team is none other than Kazuha. He can swirl from the Verdescent set, great crowd control, and elemental damage bonus buff to your team, which makes him a strong support for this team. If you don't have him, then there are alternative options, which would be Sucrose or any other animal support units. For shielders, of course, Zhongli is the best, but any other shielders work work fine. This team is why I would recommend generally to use nearly 90% of the times including these characters. If not, then there are alternative options. Next team I'm going to introduce is Electro Charge, kind of similar to Vape except replace the Pyro with Double Electro. It's mainly the same units that can apply Electro consistently will work very well with this team. The ones I would recommend is Fish Show for the battery and sub DPS. 
or Beto for the AoE Electro Burst damage. Raiden for 100% uptime with skill, although Raiden can contribute better to other teams. Cookie Shinobu for Electro Healing. And for the Flex Slot, same thing as the Vape team. Run any offensive slash defensive support. So an Animal Swirl unit is a great one to use. Either Kazuha, Sucrose, Venti, or any Shielder works for more survivability. One interesting option you can also try out is Xing Shou, which is actually a strong contender, especially if you run this team with Beto. Reason is he gives damage reduction as well as Beto, and both of those two can stack up their damage reduction. Also, he's a Hydro Battery for Tartaglia, and with certain constellations, he can decrease Hydro Resistance, which is obviously great for Tartaglia. Next team, I personally wouldn't recommend this since, in my opinion, there are better options than Tartaglia for this team, but he can be a viable option for this team. We're going to be going over Burgeon. So basically, same units you would use for a Burgeon team. Obviously, you're going to need a Dendro support, so use your best Dendro supports. Nahida definitely being the recommended option. Otherwise, anyone else is fine. Dendro Traveler still works pretty well. And of course, Toma for your Burgeon trigger. For your fourth slot, since Tartaglia has high Hydro application, I will go with another Dendro support for more Dendro application. Most of the times, Tartaglia can even over apply Hydro just by having one Dendro team member, which is why I recommend another Dendro unit. Yaya is the one I would recommend the most. And those are his team comps. Like usual, we're going to showcase in Spiral Abyss. All right, let's do this. All right, so we're going off with the Vape team. So we're going to apply Hydro first. And then once it's ready, we're going to swirl it. Apply Bennett. There's many ways you can do this, by the way. But mainly, you want to get that out of the way. So get Tartaglia's thing ready. Just uh, recharge your energy again. Iframe. Get that extra energy back. Dodge and dodge. All right, cool. Moving on. Okay, cool. Okay, dodge. We're just basically setting up. So, there you go. And then, moving on. Okay, here we go. And this is perfect. Here we go. So that's both of his bursts. DPS showcase, although that's not his full, but you know, as you can see, this team is quite capable of doing a lot of damage. Alright, up next is the electric charge team. Here we go. So apply hydro. Simply swirl everybody. But yeah, like what I mentioned before, this team has many variations, but if you do have Beto built, probably it's recommended to build Beto instead. But as you can see, he can get the electric charge, you know, applied as well. It's quite solid. Okay, here we go. Okay. So as you can see, we have like about 6 seconds downtime. But not the biggest deal in the world once we uh, suck up everybody. And then watch out for this next attack. Here we go. Brrrr, brrr, brrr. That was satisfying as hell, I'm not gonna lie. Let's go here. Boom! And then keep going. Here we go. Oh, I thought I thought he was this thing. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be trying out this virgin team. Here we go. So apply, rat. Oh, wrong character. And go Nahida. Apply to Dendro. We'll get the thing up and ready and good to go. Oh my goodness, they're already going there. That's fine. Let's go this and then go here. Apply and go crazy. Go 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 go. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Okay, he can actually do. Actually, that was kind of satisfying. I'm not gonna lie. That was pretty cool. Let's go here. But as you can tell, like once it's downtime with Tartaglia, then that's where this team does fall. But, you know, once he has his thing back up, it's quite a fun team to try out, actually. Generally, again, I don't recommend it, because again, look, as you can see, I am struggling to get all my abilities back. But, once you have everything, good to go. Then you can just go crazy. Like this. But then again, like, again, I don't recommend this, but... It's a- it, it works, it works. It definitely does work. But once you have, like, a little bit of left, that is where, yeah, as you can see, like, Tartaglia's thing will have so much downtime. If that is everything you need to know about Tartaglia, now, like usual, let's get on to his pros and cons. Starting with his pros, his mainly selling point is his fast Hydra application. This is great, especially for enabling support. 
He has strong multi-target damage, also great in single target showcases too. He has two different types of bursts and both are useful. He has one of the strongest bursts in the game and he's capable of nuking. He doesn't need his constellations at all, so you can save your money and primos. He has one of the strongest team comps in the game. Overall, in my opinion, he's still fun to play, especially for someone that's as old as him that's been released such a long time ago. It's kind of amazing to me that he's still one of my favorite characters to play with his unique playstyle. Now, moving on to cons, his own damage output is one of the lowest out of all the other five stars. He does have higher skill cap compared to other characters, so RIP players who have skill issue. Speaking of which, if not played properly, you will struggle with his cooldown management, he has stricter rotation management compared to other characters, and finally, this con is mainly for whales or Tartaglia mains, which I mentioned earlier that his constellation doesn't impact his DPS, like none of his constellations are really worth spending at all. As you can see, Tartaglia does have strengths and weaknesses, just to keep in mind that Tartaglia is one of the first units to release in this game, so some of his issues could be part of his kit being outdated like the passives and constellations. Now, on to the question of this video, should you pull for Tartaglia? And my answer is, try him out first in the character trial before pulling for him. I know that's not the usual and most straightforward answer you're looking for, but he is more of a subjective kind of character depending on the player's playstyle preference. Is he a must pull though? No, of course not, but he is still pretty strong for his role. Another thing I would consider is the next upcoming 5 star in version 4.1 is another Hydro Husbando, aka Nivellet. I generally always recommend during second phase banners that in case you are interested for the other characters in the next update, I will wait until the version 4.1 special program to confirm the banners. And of course, we don't know what Nivellet could do till his talents are officially announced. Hey, you may never know. He could even power creep Tartaglia's role. But of course, if you don't care and like Tartaglia as a character slash gameplay, then of course, pull for him. He's still great at what he does. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. So if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you guys hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel for more of this type of content. Don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you guys don't miss out on my latest uploads or whenever I go live on my streams. And that is all I got. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, until next time, stay epic and peace out.